to the Sandatas Podcast. Hi, this is Lily. Welcome back to Challenge Podcast. Bye. Today's episode is the second half of a c- the conversation between me and Kevin Fitzgerald, the associate conductor of the Jacksonville S- Symphony in Florida. Last week, Kevin and I talked about the real life <laughs> experiences of him taking auditions, preparing for them, and also um, how to create momentum. And that will be the topic of this second half. Let's talk about momentum because we I promised that we I wanted to talk about that. Um, putting yourself out there is an important thing because you want momentum, you want to be known, you you want to get yourself out there. What are some other things they've done that were um, successful or helpful for you or some other things that you want to share um, either about this or about some other things in the business? Yeah, this is a, an important and tricky like everything in conducting, it's tricky. I think it's really important to remember who you were before you wanted to be a conductor. Yeah. And how you related to people and who you were, who was important to you and like what what you cared about. Because I think that people who go into conducting, it's so competitive and pe- people are often so discouraged from getting into it because it's so hard that they, the only people who actually go into it are super driven people. Who are like, I'm never going to give up no matter what, which is great, but it can kind of give you tunnel vision. So I, I said, remember who you were before you were a conductor, because it's the people who you resonated with, who you got along with, who you wanted to spend time with. It's those people who are going to, who you're going to want to spend time with. And through spending time with people that you genuinely, for no reason other than you just like being around them and talking to them, those are the people who will introduce you to people who might be able to help you with your career. I just really believe in this, like, because it's, it's the internet, it's the email age, anyone can send any famous conductor a DM at any time. There are so many people out there, and they're trying to get ahead. And mm-hmm. they're, they're might be going about in the wrong way, because they're just trying to get to know, like, well, I have to put myself out there, I have to talk to people, I have to get to know people. But if it's coming through this screen of, well, I want something from you, or I'm trying to impress you so that you will help me in my career, because a lot of conducting is still a lot about gatekeeping and like what people, certain people think about you does matter, unfortunately. Um, You have to kind of trick yourself into believing that, well, you have to acknowledge the fact that you can't control what someone else thinks about you. You know what I mean? So going back to your authentic self, away from being a conductor, who do I enjoy being around? Who enjoys being around me? You know, go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. And, you know, lean into that because those people are more likely to, first of all, like the idea that some kind of opportunity is going to come to you is more likely to come to you through the people that you you know and trust and actually care about, right? Um, and if you really do need a favor, you want to ask someone that is actually your friend, not someone who you're kind of using as a favor, you know? Um, especially with conductors, there can only be one of us on the podium at a time, you know? And so at the end of the day, like you have to be at a certain level of career before you can start really helping other conductors because you're still looking out for yourself on some level. Um, but you know, as I get, I mean, I just, as I get a little bit older and a little more experienced, like I'm losing that sense of needed to protect myself. I can, I'm much more open and willing to help and I find that that gives me energy um but yeah and then if when you do want to reach out to someone you want to do it make sure you are genuinely into what they're doing like for I'll give you a good example there um if there's a piece that you really love and you're like oh my gosh like the LA Phil is doing Tarangalila Symphony this is amazing I love this piece Messian I love Messian you never get to hear this piece and you want to like find a way to reach out to the conductor to go to the rehearsals, no matter who the conductor is. That's great because you're doing it based on the fact that you genuinely love this piece and you genuinely want to hear it. Like it's coming from that inner child, that like excitement. You're not thinking, okay, well, this conductor, they're at this management company and they know this manager that I had lunch with last year. And maybe if I, no, 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 no. Like, there's that little demon inside of all of us that thinks that little girl that thinks like that. Um, but 
you actually will get so much more bang for your energy, bang for your buck, as they say, if you just focus your actions of networking in air quotes around mm-hmm. things that genuinely excite you. Um, just asking, asking to have lunch with someone that can, that recently conducted like, okay, I, I hear a new recording by a conductor who I really like finding a way to tell them that I liked it. And the next time they're in the city that I live near reaching out to them again and being like, you know, if it just comes across differently, if you're authentically into their work, you know, um, and if you make it about the music and about the work that the person does, even if deep down on some level, you hope that maybe they will make a call for you or ask to work with you again. Like there's so many forces. And I, I'll tell you, I know some people who are pretty high up there, people you would, you would not believe how, little power some people think they have even though they're quote unquote famous like or you think they're famous and they can just request any assistant they want or they can just make a call and get you a concert like the power is so diffused you know people don't have the power that you think they do um and so that goes back to what i said at the very very beginning the only thing you can really control is what you can do the skills that you have the knowledge that you have and also who you are as a person, like your inner wisdom, like everybody has inner wisdom from their life experience. So those are the things you can actually control. The rest of it is a soup. You cannot control. It's all just a giant soup of mixture of ideas and impressions and relationships and friendships and short exchanges. And it's like a mixture of things that you cannot predict how it's going to taste, you know, and it's different from day to day. And I mean, social media is a good way to interact with people you don't know and to share who you are and what you know. But just be careful about your audience. I think a lot of people, they want to be seen maybe as a conductor, but because they're giving a lot of educational content, maybe they they're it's going to a different crowd. But if you have like a full on coaching business and you are trying to bring a lot of conductors into your coaching business, then like educational materials make sense. Um, and also just think about it this way, whatever you put out there, make sure you would want everybody to see it, you know, all the way up to the highest level people, you know, like, like, is this something that, and I don't mean that in a way of like, you can't show who you really are. Just make sure that it really represents that you're proud of it. If it's like a conducting video that you're proud of it. And if it's something more personal, just that it's really honest and that you are comfortable sharing it. Uh, Because I know a lot of people who they want both. They want, they want to, get their name out there, but they also don't want to, they they want to like, uh, how do I say it? Like, oh, but I don't want them to know that about me. I only want them to know this about me, you know? (laughs) Um, So embracing all of who you are, that's, that's a sticky one. And that's been a challenge for me too. But especially when you get onto the podium, if you are, if you live your life every day, trying to curate what parts of people see of you, that, that muscle has to completely atrophy when you get to the podium because you have to basically drop all of that. So why try to be two people? Just say screw it and be yourself. And I mean, that doesn't mean, you know, you don't have boundaries. Don't overshare all the time. But I think there are a lot of people who think I need to, I should act like this to be a conductor or I should act like this to be successful or I need to present myself this way to be to be taken seriously. And yes, maybe those ideas do exist. But I think at the end of the day, the people whose careers really blossom are people who are genuinely unique. And well, everyone's unique, first of all, but they're okay with being unique. And they want to show that uniqueness to the world. They're not trying to fit a cookie cutter, I think. Yeah, I can certainly see what you're saying, because I remember I had a few auditions when I was younger that I would have a mindset that I assume they wanted to see a certain type of conductor. So I tried to behave that way. You know, I tried to have a particular conducting t- techniques, sometimes even that. So like I come back in a certain way, or I assume that they wanted someone rehearsing using this kind of language, be more authoritative or more powerful language when it's with me. And then I was like, no, but it takes time. And it's really, well, I think it's human human nature that because we see a lot of stories of someone being discovered like quote unquote or being um 
made famous because they're jumping because someone gave them an opportunity so they were they had they become famous over time overlined or they start getting a lot of gigs overnight when it's really deceptive in a sense yeah usually those people have been i mean sometimes there are you know freak situations but either they've either been working really hard for a long time and you just didn't know about it or okay. they get a lot at first and then it dies away yeah so don't worry and i think it's so hard on social media to take this advice I'm about to give, but really try to focus on yourself. And if that means unfollowing every conductor you or are muting every conductor you have on social media because it just triggers you, do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you, like ever. I know it's so cliche, but everyone has their own journey and their own rhythm of rhythm of success and like what that looks like. I mean, some people would say I'm very successful, but like there are so many people who teach it like state universities who make like four times as much as me so you know <laughs> so it just you just never know i'm you know what i mean like I, it just depends what you're going for and what the end game is and uh if seeing people succeed inspires you that means you're in a really good place emotionally psychologically mm -hmm. um i've been recently getting into that place where i'm getting good news from friends and i'm like actually f super happy for them and it doesn't i'm finally secure enough not to be jealous <laughs> i know that feeling yeah, I mean, I, I haven't. I can still fall into it, but I, I, I honestly can say, now it's shifting a little bit, which is good. Um, but because you have to, you have to realize that, like, if you are putting in the work and you're doing the, the stuff, that your time is coming. And so many people told me that when I was in those long periods of, you know, uncertainty, and you know, essentially, uh, the difference between being an artist and being a real person is that, or average people, average people. They have as, just as much as uncertainty as us. They just get to hide from the uncertainty all the time because they have all these things that are so constant. But, you know, at any point a house could fall on us or the, you know, the sky could fall, you know, like there's no guarantee of anything. We as artists have to constantly deal with uncertainty because it's like built into our lives. So it doesn't mean it's easy, but it's better than being kind of like, you know, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> <laughs> the last question before, um, before we wrap up is, how do you balance um, between, you know, like reaching out to people, being present, but like building your momentum while being protective to yourself, to your sanity and having boundaries and all that? Like, how do you, how do you dance the fine line? Good question. It's hard sometimes. Um, well, it's hard all the time. One of the things that really helps me in the last month is that I keep, I turn my phone off around eight o'clock, I don't just put on silent. I physically turn it off and I wow. put it away where I can't see it. And I don't, I, I bought a clock, like an alarm. I don't turn it on until noon. Some people can't do that with their jobs or with their life of, you know, they have kids at school, they need to be contacted in an emergency. You know, I personally have a hard time, you know, staying focused if I start my day with my phone. So I just do my work first thing, you know? Today I had to get up at 6.30 because I had a 10 a.m. call, but normally I would get up, you know, 7 and then do my work mostly in the morning. I do some afternoon study, but before my head has a chance to get messed up by everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have any formula for the building your network, but I think staying in touch with people you already know okay. is a really good first step. If there's someone you haven't talked to in five years and you send them a text that says, hey, I know it's been a long time, would love to catch up might be a little too fast. You might want to like yeah. follow that. You might want to like ease back into it, you know? Okay. Um, a, a great way to get someone on the phone and to talk with people is to just ask for advice. Hey, I, I have some career questions I'd love to run by you or I would love to just catch up and pick your brain for 25 minutes, you know? Or I would love to take you out to lunch or out to coffee. People usually don't say no to that, you know? Okay. So, but again, start with the people you know and who already, like I said, before you were, even before you were a conductor or maybe early on, stay in touch with those people. I can't tell you how many times someone reached out to me for an opportunity and they said, oh, so, so and so that I know mm -hmm. from a decade ago recommended you, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are all, there's an infinite amount of people in the world that you could get to know. And you could, mm -hmm. you could send a million emails a day and still have people to email the next day. <laughs> Um, so instead of constantly reaching out, see who you already have near you. And 
I think also like, you know, tending to the relationships that you have is really important. And social media is great for that because you can see your friend's success. You know, I collaborated with this pianist a year ago and now I can see they've got a new great job. I can write to them very easily. I don't think about it in the moment as, oh, I'm networking and improving my network. I am just seeing it as like congratulating my friend, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you are someone who's more shy and uh, doesn't, you're not super social, this stuff is going to feel really, really out of your comfort zone, right? Yeah. And maybe you shouldn't go against your intuition so hard. But maybe if, if, if you're one of those people who's like, I would love to just be in my house by myself all day, every day, and never talk to another single person, maybe conducting like, isn't the most fitting path. But if, but if you're if it's too late, and you're already a conductor, like you have to work on that part of yourself, you have to ask yourself, right. why don't I want to be around people? What am I afraid of? What what are they what am I insecure about? What are they? What do, what do I think that they are going to say about me because there's some kind of deep childhood thing there with wanting to be excluded because we're social creatures you know yeah so if you think in your head well being alone is safer then you probably had some kind of like rough thing at school or you know something with family so not to get too heavy but like you have to examine yourself as a human being to be a conductor so you have to know where your triggers are and you know it's an it's a lifelong journey but if you if you just say well i'm a conductor that has to do with music that has nothing to do with me. Like you, that's wrong. You have to be mm -hmm. your full, full self. So I know I'm not probably not answering the question, but stay in touch with people. And let's say just thinking strategically, like, oh, I'm driving through this city. Who do I know in that city that I could get for get get lunch with? Or, uh -huh. hey, I, there's this project. Again, go back to the music. There's this production going on at this opera. I'm very interested in. And my friend used to work at that company. Maybe I could ask that friend who I should talk to. You know, again, like sure. these are just thoughts about thoughts. I'm not consciously thinking that, but mm -hmm. you actually know a lot more people. And if you're sitting there listening to this thinking, I don't know anyone, I have no network. What I want you to do is get a big sheet of white paper and yeah. like just start brainstorming. Write down the people on the outsides that you that you want to get to know, that you think you mm -hmm. should know or are interested in getting to know. And then start in the middle with you. And then just, I bet if you write enough names down, you will see that you can get pretty close with a bubble graph of getting uh -huh. to those people. Meaning like, oh, this person was this person's assistant for this concert, you know? like, mm -hmm. and, and, and the point is, it's not to show you who you should email and to call and to be weird. It's to actually show you that you're not as disconnected from this world as you might think, right? Uh -huh. This world is a lot smaller than you think. And even though people, big famous people, Yannick, Dudamel, they seem like, you know, in the stratosphere of fame and glory, but like there are still people you could run into on the subway. You know, there are still people, they're humans, you know, and, you, um, you know, you can, you can, you can meet them and you can get in touch with them. You know, they're somehow, you know, it might take you years, it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I think I, I, something I, I notice, especially a lot with educators, and I want to speak to them for a moment just before we wrap up, uh, something I'm seeing, and I mean more like teachers in school, not so much university people, but also university yeah. people. I want everyone to realize that we're all part of the same ecosystem from the elementary music teacher all the way through middle school, high school, college, like all of that is part of the same world. You're not separate from us, you know, and we're not separate from you and you're not worse than us and we're not better than you. You know, I taught a lot. I still teach. Like, I think, you know, George Zell, before he got his Cleveland job, was teaching at Manus, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot, especially these days, great conductors like such as yourself working at the university level and professional level. It's, I mean, it's all mixed together these days. And I yeah. just want us to all feel like we're on the same team and we want the same things um, and that we're not separate because I think that music education will get more support and funding and uh, attention to it if it aligns itself with maybe the professional performing arts and the performing arts will have better education outcomes like if we're informed by what the educators are doing like it, it needs to act together and not as two separate things so um and i think a lot when i talk to people uh, some of my clients like that i coach the educators the biggest hang up is that they don't see themselves as being in the same universe do you think they are educators who just conduct? Right, exactly. And it's like, well, you're you're musicians, and you're trying to get other people to play music 
with you, which is basically the same thing that Dudamel is doing. It's just the people in front of him have a lot more information and skills. Yeah. So, uh, and we all love music. And that's the, the, I know it might be a cheesy way to end, but that's the whole point is we love music and we want more people to love music so we can keep it alive. Um, and so that is my speech. <laughs> Yeah, I know Larry, um, the late Larry Racco, um used to be a percussion teacher in California or somewhere, like an, at a middle school before his career took off. So, yeah, that's he, what I heard. Uh, he worked, uh, he was uh, the second band director at uh, Michigan also. You know, he was a percussion teacher for a drum, a drum and bugle corps actually in California. So, um, yeah. it's all it's all connected. And honestly, you have to have really good ears to f- fix a middle school band. So and really know where you are going to because there are a million things that you can correct. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's not easy. So, anyway, yeah, we're all in this together. Yes, and I know your time is precious, and I'm so thankful that you spent some time here with me and with my audience. Um, just to let my audience know where they can find you, like your social media and your website. My best. Uh, way to find me is my social media. It's Conductor K Fitz, Kevin Fitzgerald mm-hmm. K Fitz, at, and that's just in, uh, Instagram. I'm not on Twitter. Um, and then my email, uh, sorry, my website is con- mm-hmm. Kevin Fitzgerald Conductor.com. And if you want to email me, it's Conductor K Fitz at gmail.com. And if you forget the K, it will go to a train conductor in New Jersey. So it's Conductor K Fitz. I'm not going to, I get a lot of emails from me, so. <laughs> we'll put all that in the show notes and thank you so much again, Kevin. It's so lovely to talk to you. Same to you, Jalen. Mm-hmm.